Hi there, name's Woodrow Flower Bucket. Nice to meet you. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to find the perfect camera. It's a stupid life journey. When it's the lens you should be focused on. I have put way too much thought into this, but today we discuss what's the perfect fo purple focal length. Oh, but God. What's the best focal length for YouTube? Is it a wide, distorty bullshit lens like this? Or did the cinema call you and ask if there was a matinee special this night? Let's discuss it, my friend. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So right now we're on the Samsung NX1 and I still can't believe it to this day. It just, it does not get better. Autofocus wise, okay, it gets better than that. But just the smoothness of the transitions, it's just so beautiful. The Samsung NX1 to this day, 4K oversampled from 6K never overheats. And we're on the pro lens, the zoom, 16 to 50, Tony 2 to 2.8. To this day, nobody's made a zoom like that. Unbelievable. The pyramid could have been in the shot better. So today I'm going to test a bunch of different cameras and lenses to show you the difference, but you could just get an all-encompassing zoom like this. 16 mils, plenty wide to 50. Like, you get this cinematic type shot. Oh god, I forgot the autofocus it latches onto the hands. Why, Samsung? Why? So I'll show you a bunch of different focal lengths, and you'll feel the difference. You'll see it. And we'll talk about the emotional roller coaster ride that each focal length brings. So let's start with a super way too wide lens. So this got weird fast. This got way too much. There's way too much happening right now. You could do this. If you're a comedic goofball like this, this might be your show. Why not? Oh, little Samsung. I tell you, there's a little diversion tactic here. I will destroy the Canon R5 with this. I guarantee you it has better dynamic range, smooth autofocus, like you wouldn't even, why would you want anything better? Get out of my life. Now, I used to think the wider the better for YouTube because I was stuck with Panasonic. I had to focus on myself. So this is a manual focus lens. So you want to be close in so you can see the focus. Okay, nailed it. But then you're so distorted. It really does look stupid. Your face. This is a similar framing to the other. Look at, look at Samsung boy over there. How many dates does he get? At least three more than I do. Still, I'm a good cook. I can make a souffle. Let's see him do that. He can't. So we got the ultra wide here. It's too wide, admittedly. You don't need to go this extreme. You could. This is basically an 11 mil focal length. It's fisheye. So this is what it looks like with fish in the scene. So I've corrected it. It helps a bit. Outside, it does wave a bit. The horizon does this seagull shit, but you can get by. There are uses for this kind of shot. Depends where you are. If you have a much more interesting background, you could be like on top of a mountain or something and overlooking the world. You could, in theory, this would be great, better than any lens, you're showing so much. But most of us aren't doing that. We're YouTube scrubs. We have no life. We talk in our mother's living rooms. So let's switch it into a little tighter angle, a little more realistic, but still wide. So now that was the Pergear 7.5 mil Tony 2.8. 11 mil equivalent lens. Now we're on the Samyang 12 mil Tony 2. This is more like an 18 mil. Now this is still a very distorted look, but if you're manually focusing, it's so good to be close to this thing. You could technically have a shotgun mic right on here, being this close. It's a little weird of a shot. It's a little weird. If you're fat, this will slim you down a bit. It'll slim you down. There's only so much technology can do for you though. Just maybe lay off the cake for a couple New Year's Eves, you know? Now you could do this, but next to Sammy Boy, 75 mils over there. 
a lot more handsome. I do do his laundry. It's very dirty. He smells bad. He works out hard in the monkey strength program. That brings out all your beef sweat. It's not good. It's not good at all. Now back off me, hobo. I had the IBIS set to 7.5 mil. Oh no. Oh no. If you back off of your hobo life, I can't guarantee I'm in focus, but you have a fun shot. It's wide, it's still way too wide, but you don't distort the face as much. I'll tell you, I used to think people say online 50 mil focal length and up is for flattering your face. What they don't tell you is that the distance from the lens is all that matters. That's the only thing that matters. You could have this thing away, in fact. This is roughly where the Samsung was when I zoomed into 50 mils and I pushed it back there. And so I'll zoom in here. It'll be all pixelated and terrible quality, but you can see next to the Samsung, it's the same basic facial structure. It's still the flattering, flattening of the face. It's just, you can't actually do it. The only thing that matters is the distance from the camera. So I didn't know that. I used to zoom in to 50 mils on my Canon G7X, still holding it in my hand and it just, zoomed in on the face. The distance never changed. You just exaggerated my acne. No thank you. But honestly, this focal length for YouTube, totally doable. You could, I could run my whole show on this. In fact, when Marcus Picks gave me that GH5S, it's over there, with the 12 mil 21.4, we'll switch to the 1.4, no. We'll switch to that exact combo 24 mil instead of this 18. It's a little tighter, but it was doable. It wasn't perfect. It does distort the face and I can always see it when a YouTuber starts their show and I'm like, okay, I see the distortion. You got your Sigma 16 mil, which is a 24 mil equiv or the full frame version. I can always spot the 24 mil. I think fat people like it. So let's do it. Let's switch to the G9 actually, because the 12 mils on there and we'll do the autofocus with it. Will it hunt? Oh, Penny boy. Oh, how you been? Uh, old friend, old trusted friend. So this is what I switched to. For the longest time, I just had the 50 mil equivalent, pain in the ass to focus on myself. And then I got this lens and I was like, oh, this is so much easier. I couldn't trust the autofocus, GH5S. I tried for a bit and I was like, oh, it's still pulsing. But this could easily, I can reach the shutter button. So you just, boom, in focus. As long as you don't move, eh, decent length. Oh, well, this is a fun shot. It's still a little distorty. It's a little distorty. As the Panasonic autofocus system tracks me wherever I go without ever pulsing. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to pulse. It just knows it's confident. Contrast detection is the future, my friend. You didn't even know it. They knew it. They knew it and they know it now. Kind of sucks Panasonic G9 can't do the DCI 4K with the bars up there that I hard encode and never do it properly in my video editing studio suite. This is what most YouTubers go for because these are the most popular lenses, the Sigma 16 mil, which is this equivalent on the APS-C lineups. It's like, it's so easy as a YouTube, there's nothing wrong with this shot. It's good, it's a good shot, it's a good shot. It's just, it does distort and lengthen your nose. Just know that ahead of time, don't sneeze, don't do it. It's good to have a couple different focal lengths in your arsenal, but let's switch it up to the Leica 15 mil. 21.7. So right now we are at a 24 mil equivalent, Tony 2.8. Hardly in it, Tony. Let's switch it up. So now we're in the same exact spot. We changed the lens. So now we're at a 30 mil equivalent instead of 24. We jumped in, flattened the background slightly. 30 mil though, if you're on Panasonic, you're pushing the limits of what you can reach. I can barely reach that shutter. So if you're on manual focus, which you probably should be, this lens Sometimes it's a pulse happy one. If you're leaning here, sometimes you had to, uh, if you really want to be back right there, and then you lean in and you're out of focus like I always do. I'm a moron. Right here. You're good to go. Can't reach it. If you had that remote hack, which I did, then I could come out here and focus on myself. Deep. Then we're good. But 28 mil, slightly wider than this. If you get like a full frame 28 1.4, Get some more Tony back there. There's maximum Tony, but I look tired. I work too hard. This is work, but I have debated it hard. Say I buy the Sony a7S III, you'd think, okay, 
the G Master 24 mil. You just saw the micro loser version of it. <laughs> I pointed to every single camera but the camera I wanted. See how Panasonic just focuses on it quickly? Oh, I just showcased you the lens perfectly. It's an amazing lens, but it is a bit distorty. So if you're fat, you buy that lens and then you slim down a bit. You don't have to diet. But if on the other hand, you're a health channel like I am, and I'm trying to gain muscle, these wider focal lengths make my boy body look like a boy's body. It's just not right. I noticed it when I filmed on the Lawa, the 7.5 mil, which is a 15 mil equivalent. I just, I look like a boy. Like I don't even work out at all. It looks pathetic. <laughs> it's sad. I remember meeting a guy. I gave him my X3000, my Sony X3000. I miss it. Oh, give it back, asshole. <laughs> And he met me in person. He's like, oh, you look a lot bigger in person because I'm filming on these wide angle lenses. You think my fingers are 18 feet long? They are. I'll touch your mom with them. But we're getting into the sweet zone here. 30 mil equivalent, I think. You back it off to 28 mil. So that Sony a7S III, I think I would lean more towards the 28 mil Tony II instead of the G Master. It's a lot cheaper, lighter, and it might even be more pleasing for YouTube. You just have to be back a bit and you can no longer have a shotgun mic on the camera. You can only do that for the ultra wides, but then you distort your face out. That ain't real. Let's bump it up a notch. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're in the cinema. Oh, the Fuji that could. We're on the 23 mil Tony II, which is a 35 mil equivalent. This is very pleasing. You're still a little distorted. Be real with yourself but your YouTube cinema quality now. And just as a side bonus test, I put the autofocus area box right here. And now when I turn and it loses my face, it stays on me, right? Wow, I set that slow. I set that slow, but it won't focus here. Now, no, this is not as cinematic as a 50 mil shot or a 75 to 85 mil as you'll see. We'll get there. But this still has the convenience of you have a camera pretty close to you. You can still judge your exposure. That's the problem with the longer ones. Yes, you get a more flattering image. You're respected now. You're a businessman. But you can't see a damn thing. You can't judge the exposure. Wait till we switch to the Olympus with like an 85 mil lens. I can't see a damn thing. And do you even have the space? I have to put it at the very end of my wall. That's not a very big place, but you might be even a smaller room than this. You're in your mom's room, bitch. But 35 is a nice one. It's a bit tight. Honestly, I would back it off a notch. Back off me. You get it back there, then you have something. You have some breathing room. It would be nice to have a Tony 1.2 over here. You can see everything back there. It's kind of bullshit, unless you lean in. But then we just went back to the old problem we had. So 24 mil is a little distorty, a little wide, unless you're fat. 28 mil might be the sweet spot. 35 is a little tight, but it can look nice. Depending on what you like to look like, this could be it. Or should you bump it up even further for egotistical reasons? Oh my God, he's so professional. You'd listen to his every word because you know he's lived a dignified life and he's willing to share with you the secrets. So now we're on the Viltrox 33 mil Tony 1.4, which is like a 50 mil equivalent. And I know we had a lot of fun just trashing this lens, but if you're just sitting here, I find it works pretty good. And the autofocus is snappy. And as long as you slowly move back to your position, you're good. It's a good lens. Or not. I actually much prefer this lens to the Fuji 35mm Tony II because the Tony II has such breathing. Like it's so noticeable, it's so amateur, it's terrible, it's unusable. Whereas the Viltrox, as long as you don't do what I just did and you're just here, you're chilling, it doesn't really lose you too much it's reliable and then you get more tone and it's much cheaper it's a little less sharp this has nothing to do with the video Just move on 
In my opinion, a 50 mil lens, you're kind of in in between town. You're not quite to cinematic portrait photography areas, but you're still inconveniencing yourself with a super far away camera. I can't reach it. Oh no. Oh, what's the, oh God, why are you doing that? Like, I can't really tell if I'm in focus or not. The box is tracking me, but that lies sometimes. So it's kind of nice to have the camera right here and you can judge it periodically. So I don't know what it is about the 50 mil focal length that it's just, you're in no man's land. It's not the sweet spot for anything. It's the worst of all worlds. It still looks pretty nice, but it's actually really nice. It's good, it's good times. You can bring it a little closer for the personal vlogs. You're cut off. I think this is a bit stupid. Whenever I see videos of people and it's this shot, you're cut off just below the neck like you're a moron. I don't like the shot at all. This is stupid. But there are some dramatic cases where, like usually your video is not dramatic enough for this. But if you're telling a story like how when I was a kid, I just wanted a lollipop. I wanted the red one. They only had orange. I thought, okay. I'll try the orange. It wasn't the same though. Red is cherries. Orange is citrus based. I'm allergic. <laughs> or, theoretically, you could move this camera back with your 50 mil. You get a wide lens, just like the 20 mil was right here. But you're less distorted. So you still get your wide angle look but then the inconvenience of not knowing if you're even recording, unless you have a Fuji camera that has a tally light. They thought of everything, but you can push it further, my friend. Don't think these are the limits. Don't limit yourself. Just briefly, we're on the Mitocon 35 mil. It's only a two mil increase, but a 0.95 tone of a one. And so you get the dream like, it's annoying. You lose the autofocus of the Viltrox, but if you nail it, which you probably didn't, this might be my favorite look of anything I've tried. It just, it's so beautiful, but you gotta hook up a HDMI. I got the monitor here, night picks, fine adjustments, can't move, but who needs to? Oh my God. I just wanted to see how it looked next to the Viltrox. In fact, if Viltrox boy is beside me right now and he shouldn't be within 10 feet of me, I do have a restraining order. Does he look better than me? Is he sharper? I find this is so sharp at 0.95. Usually those kind of lenses are not sharp wide open. You got to stop down to 1.4 and then like, what was the point of that lens? Nothing. So let's switch to the final focal length and then we'll wrap up our thoughts here. Welcome to the cinema, my friend. There's popcorn in the back. It's genetically modified and there's fake butter because that doesn't cause heart disease. So now we're on the Olympus EM1 Mark III with the 42.5 mil Tony 1.7. So this is now an 85 mil focal length. And this is the portrait focal length that people love because it flatters the face, flattens the face in a flattering manner. And it's not real. You don't look like this in real life, I don't think. So that's why I call it a lie lens. It's a lens of lies. I'm dark. That light in the background's annoying me. So honestly, this is one of the most flattering focal lengths and just pleasing images. It just looks professional. It looks like you're higher production quality than you actually are. And people think you're more important even though your advice is terrible and will kill thousands if they ever listen to you. This is the focal length you want for that. The problem is framing. Like I have all this white in the shot because it's so far, that's at the edge of my apartment. I can't even get further away than that. So this is terrible. For YouTube, honestly, like you can barely tell that it's recording. I can't see a damn thing. Can't see if the focus is working. Exposure, can't judge it. But the glory befolds us. If your decision is entirely ego-based and you just wanna look good, look better than I do in real life, please just show the world that I have some dignifying qualities, then you go with an 85 mil lens. You'll look pretty good. You'll look pretty good, but at the expense of the annoyance. It's not practical. So you have to ask yourself, is beauty your top priority or is fun mode engaged more important? This can be fun. I like them both. I like them both. I like having a, this is a little wide. Let's be real. 
But having a nice wide lens and then a super long one? Let's talk about the best focal lengths. We haven't been talking about that. In my opinion, for vlogging, it's very different, but if you're gonna vlog, I think 20 mil is the sweet spot because then Ibis doesn't behave weird unless you get a fisheye super wide like that one, then the warpy corners don't exist. So you could do that, but look for fisheye lenses and then correct it in post. It's a doable solution, but 20 mil is the sweet spot. The Ibis behaves okay on most cameras, I think, at least on the Fuji, it's doable, it's a little shaky but you can get away with it. But when it comes to this kind of video, when you're at your home in your little pre-built studio, if you can call that back there a studio, I think 28 to 35 is your sweet spot. Any wider, you're getting a little distorted and weird, but 28 is a personal feeling. You're right there with your audience. I think the wider the lens, the closer you feel, but if you look goofy and stupid and stretched out, Nobody wants to be that close to you. They're just like, oh, let's, is there another show that's not so distracting? But 28 to 35 is your sweet spot for at home. So look for those lenses in your system. I think the 50 mils in no man's land, it's just, it's a nice flattering look, but it's not as flattering as the 85 and it's just as inconvenient. So I would go for the 85 if looks are most important, professional. How do I manage to be unprofessional? Oh, please, God. Oh, why? The video's so long already. You're just gonna add time to it. People are already confused. Your life decisions are terrible. This is the worst one. Where are you going? Oh, God. Oh, you're so dark now. Oh, they can't even see you. They just wanna know what focal length. They just wanna know what lens to buy. What, what should they buy? What are you doing? Just show them. You've been making videos for years. How come you don't know more than you do? Oh, it's so wrong. Stop doing this. Please, don't ever do it again. Make this the last time. Please be the last time you ever do this. When it comes to what tone should you use, you could get away with a zoom lens. You could pretty much get a 24 to 70 and be done with it, 2.8, but I think 2.8 is not enough for the indoor studio type things. You want your faster 1.8 at least, maybe a two full frame equivalent. None of this crop shit. But this is so much more important than your camera. The look you have is determined by the lens. So say you want the Canon R5, you're like, all right. Their lenses are not that great. They have a bunch of 1.2 primes that are like three grand each. American, 40 mil Canade. Canade dollars don't count. Honestly though, I could make the R6 work in here with its bullshit modes in 1080p. I could probably do that. But the 35 mil 1.8 does have focused breathing. It annoys me. All those RF lenses do. They're not great for video. So the Sony has much better lenses. I'd get that maybe 28, 22 maybe the 35 1.8 maybe even dream get the 85 1.8 or the new sigma 1.4 get something like this dream in your life but you got to look at the lenses first and then decide what body because that's where you're at but fuji has such amazing lenses that don't work well for video all their 1.4 primes i haven't even tested them so maybe they're perfect maybe it's user error on everybody else i, I could find the truth I don't think there's one lens to rule them all though for every situation. Maybe the 20 mil, you can vlog with it and you could theoretically make YouTube videos with it. It wouldn't be terrible, but you wouldn't get this kind of love into your life. It's not even looking good, is it? I messed up the shot. Oh, why is the white? It's so much better now, the well-planned efforts he put in. Oh my God, the air conditioner is now in shot. That's what you want. <laughs> You notice the highlights, eh, a little clippy. We don't have the dynamic range on the micro loser sensor. It's unfortunate. So to recap, 10 to 24 full frame equivalents. You're goofy, but getting less and less goofy. 24 being you're still a goof, but less goofy than the 10. 24 to 35, you're, you have some dignity and you have a pleasing show. You talk about puppets but people still like it for some reason. 35 to 85, 
you're trying to be professional and people might see that thinking, oh, he's trying too hard. Why are you doing that? You have an ego. I don't like you just for that thumbs down unsubbed, bitch. So let me know your ideal focal length for filming yourself. Let me know your thoughts down below. The further away, oh, the harder it is, but oh, I have this life hack. Tell me all your secrets down below and I'll delete them and pretend I came up with them later because I have an ego, an 85 millimeter ego, which you will buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt to thank me for. And subscribe for more videos, I'll see you out there.